Hi, Beth. We're here at OSCON, and we just saw your keynote talk. It was great, uh, funny, and there seemed to be uh, kind of a theme of paranoia in it, and we're wondering, how does paranoia, does it leak into your life if it does? It does and it doesn't. Um, so, for example, when it comes to the embedded device and the Internet of Things devices I have, um, I generally buy open source devices, so I know what I'm running. Um, and I generally almost always look for GPL compliance uh, with regards to them. Um, that said, I do a lot of old tech stuff, which would be, it would be amazing uh, to know just how much of that is actually open now. Um, like I said in my keynote, I have a lot of very old radios that, you know, now their utility is limited, but um, for my personal life, uh, if you walk into my house, it looks like you walked into 1921. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. I actually think that those old, like those old radios yeah. and stuff, the engineering is phenomenal because they were, you know, they had a very different set of tools to work with, and in some ways, harder problems to solve than we. In a, in a lot of ways, I've learned so. I, I've become a better engineer by looking at old technology. Um, and it's just amazing how, like, it, when you look at people, how people used to become engineers, they started out that way, um, with the old Heath kits and right. learning radio and moving on from there. I meet so many old engineers who that was where they started out. Right. Well, so it's we take it for granted now, but it really is fascinating that you can move something through the ether to somewhere else and have it coherent mm -hmm. at the other end. You obviously spend a lot of time on embedded stuff. In your keynote, you were talking about some of the dangers, but there's got to be some positive stories for you to be into it. You can tell us a little bit about what, what you're looking forward to, what, what you like about the embedded space. Um, one of the things that I like a lot is that there is, especially around the Yocto project, there is a large community of people who are all coordinating on shared metadata, shared build resources, shared systems and processes in order to make embedded easier. I, I remember when I first started in uh, looking into embedded, it's like, okay, I have to develop this entire tool chain now in order to just develop, um, which was kind of was kind of uh, hard about ten years ago. It was not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, now, your average user could get up and running in about an hour and a half versus the week and a half it took me in order to figure out how I was going to do my cross compilations. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, you b we brought up Heartbleed a few times and and the issues around embedded and, and security. Um, you know, how can hope open source help, and how can you, you know, how can we address the kind of cultural issues that led to Heartbleed, right? Where there's not enough support yes. for the project. Um, like I said in my talk, one of the beautiful things that came out of Heartbleed is that it shone a big spotlight onto these areas that are core critical infrastructure that were underfunded or understaffed. And I think one of the wonderful things is that the Linux Foundation has stepped up and said, we need to start supporting these and moving this forward. And other corporations have actually said, yeah, mm -hmm. we are, our, our investment in Linux depends upon this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that was one of the wonderful things that came out of that. And you know, I think one of the things about open source is more eyes, less bucks. If more people are looking at it, mm. then you know you're going to find these things. Mm -hmm. Great. So, I really like that you brought up the upgrades and so forth. Uh, it's funny because I was just reading an article about Tesla and that they upgrade their car. So even if you have an older one, you get the right. the, the newer stuff in it. And you know, I come from the software space. You're focused on software. Where there's kind of a culture of constant beta, continuous uh, upgrade. You know, how do we how do we translate it to something like embeddables where there's a few kind of like structural impediments to that? Yeah. Um. One of the problems with when we say embedded, it can mean just about 
like from a connected device that's constantly there to something very low level in a robot in a factory somewhere that isn't connected, never will be connected. And I don't think there's one sword to slay them all. Um, there's not going to be one answer. Unfortunately, um, it, 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 well, no, let me back up here. It, it shouldn't, I shouldn't say unfortunately. I think that we still will have this culture of field upgrades for those non-connected devices that you know are relatively dumb. Mm -hmm. um, but as we move forward and more and more devices are connected, um, I think that there are people who are doing work that, it, that will support that continuous, uh, um, continuous upgrade path. So for example, one of the things that the Octo Project does is we support package feeds. Um, like a regular distro, you can create your own distro and create a package feed for it mm -hmm. and create it so that you can upgrade via there. Um, I think that there's other interesting upgrade paths that people are doing, like you know, we download an entire binary image, blast it to a different partition, and then we try to boot into that partition. That fails to boot, then we have a failover, and we can go back to the original one. Um, I think the concept of upgrade paths within embedded is relatively new. I, I think. I, I think. think so. in, I think. In well, let me rephrase that. I think in a lot of mobile devices, mobile device folks, they get this. They know this. Mm -hmm. um, I think when it comes to things like you know HVAC systems, this is you know they were, they have that field upgrade path that mm -hmm. they're used to just sending a technician out to go blast new firmware. Um, and I think that's really the folks that you know need to start looking into, and I'm sure that most of them are into how they do that upgrade path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I think it's great that this is now starting to be talked about more because yeah. it's clearly an important piece to it. So let's talk a little about Yocto. Maybe you can find a little detail on it. And you know, this is Oscon. I'm curious, like what tools, what tools you use? What is your personal uh, stack? Oh, so um, <laughs> what my personal <laughs> stack is. Um, so let's talk about what I do. Um, my job is build and release engineer as the Octo project. I also maintain the Octo Auto Builder, which is a build bot based uh, continuous integration solution that specifically utilizes um, the Octo project to build out embedded images. Um, I know a lot about BuildBot. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I like about BuildBot is that is how easy it is to do the very hard things that you do. Um, and one of the things that we tried to do within the Octo Auto Builder is make it easier for people to use BuildBot. Um, I ended up refactoring the uh, Auto Builder about two years ago um, because at the time the BuildBot config was about 2,800 lines long with a mixture of code and config, which is just very, very bad. Um, and this is kind of one of the ways that people look at continuous integration is that they treat Jenkins cruise control as continuous integration solution. And then they go to BuildBot and they say, oh, we're just going to create a config file. And they do it wrong. So the way that we did it is by having an entirely different um, config set and custom build steps that allow people to be able to write their own configs keep code and config separate, and make it easier for people to, to actually develop in this and be able to have, you know, something got checked into the repository, let's rebuild an entire Linux distro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the nice things about the Octo project is that when something gets checked in, we can ana analyze the dependency chain and just rebuild those things that need oh. to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. No sense rebuilding an entire distro, just rebuild all right. the dependencies. Mm -hmm. So when you say code, what kind of code is it? C, is it what? Um, what BillBot, yeah. uh, it's all Python. Oh. It's all Python. And, and honestly, most of um, the Octo project, we rely heavily on Python. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we get these two terms confused. We have BillBot and uh, uh, BitBake. BitBake is our task execution. Um, pretty much think of it as make for embedded devices mm -hmm. that knows how to do, deal with things like autoconf and make and runs through uh, a set of recipes and these recipes end up spitting out 
you know, various different things like RPMs, DEBs, IPKs, and creating image, embedded images from them. Mm -hmm. Great. So this all sounds great. I, I love the topics you're bringing up and getting people to think about this stuff. It, it seems like reproducibility is this kind of like, has become like a first order mm -hmm. uh, consideration in the embedded thing. So I think this is like really neat stuff where people are thinking more about hardware, which is something we know more and more people are thinking about. So that's my segue into your Twitter handle, <laughs> <laughs> at Dirty City Bird. We're in a city with a famous skit yes. about put a bird on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I've had that. So my nickname is Pidge, and I've had that nickname for a lot longer than Portlandia. Um, I was given that nickname in first grade because I walked pigeon toes for many, many years, and um, I didn't like it back then. And when I turned 21, I got on IRC, and that was many, many years ago, and I needed a handle and the only thing someone had called me other than my name was Pidge. <laughs> so I just said, you know what, I'll own it. Very good, very good. Well, thanks a lot for one, thanks for doing the keynote and thanks Thank for coming you. here to talk to us. Really thanks. appreciate it. Thank you.